Welcome to Well-Rounded Mama's YouTube channel. I'm Tori, I am one of the midwives down here with Well-Rounded Mama, and I am joined today with Sarah, also one of the <laughs> midwives down here. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about AMA, or advanced maternal age, and how that can affect your pregnancy, what doctors might recommend, what we might recommend, and we're gonna kinda go over all that stuff. Yeah. So Sarah, yeah. tell me about stuff. <laughs> well, I think it's a, an important topic, especially nowadays. Like people tend to wait later yeah. in life to have babies. Sure. Most people are waiting until after they have established careers or go For to sure. college or things like that. Met so certain goals in their life. Exactly. Yeah. So there are different categories of age differences during pregnancy that we do consider. One of them kind of starts around 30s. Some of your risks of stuff coming up start to increase at about 30, but 35 tends to be like the American standard of when we consider somebody of advanced maternal age. It's um, so funny. I'm like, so not just <laughs> geriatric. I was going to say <laughs> what they actually call it is, is, is like geriatric, like parody. It's, yeah. it's really ridiculous. Well, I think it's important too to note that like there are some countries that don't even recognize AMA until 40. So mm -hmm. here in America, it's a little bit different than some other our other countries that we've seen studies come out of and things like that. Yeah, and I think the only reason why they say that is because that's when they notice, according to studies, when the risk starts increasing. Yes. So it doesn't mean that you are at a high risk the second you turn 35. It just means that that is when they have noticed that upward that trend. trend. Yeah. Yes. I think some important things to know is that if you are pregnant and you are over 35, there is some testing that you might want to go through with some of those increased risks for birth defects and different things like that. There are some genetic tests that you might want to talk to your doctor or your midwife or your care provider about. Cell-free DNA you can do as early as eight, nine weeks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a non-invasive blood test to see if that baby has any markers for things like Down syndrome, mm -hmm. Turner syndrome, things like that. And, and it can also tell the gender. Yeah. It can tell the gender really early. So it is like a nice way. Um, it's not introducing anything into your body or affecting the baby. It's just a, a simple blood draw. Usually mm -hmm. if something comes up, what is the next step that if something were to be flagged on that test. Mm -hmm. Well, usually, so in our practice, because we are home birth midwives, that usually would be a reason to refer someone to a physician. So we would probably refer to a perinatologist to our specialists of more high risk cases. And they, based off of what those results were, would make some recommendations on yeah. a plan of action from there. Yeah. So some of those things might be nuchal translucency ultrasound to see if that is um, consistent with the test that they mm -hmm. had. In more serious cases, they might need to do an amniocentesis to determine if that mm -hmm. was accurate or not. Because there is margin for error in all these tests. Yeah, so. there is. And I think that's important to know. And also when considering whether or not you want to take one of these tests, thinking about what your response would be if something came back positive. Like yeah. what would you do with that information? Yeah, absolutely. Is this going to ease my mind now for the rest of the pregnancy? Or if you get a positive, what would you plan to do about that? For a lot of our clientele, like for religious purposes or even just based off of conviction, personal mm -hmm. conviction, they might not want to do anything about yeah. that. Sometimes if you don't get genetic testing, those are markers that we look for during a 20 week ultrasound scan as well. So sometimes if you don't get genetic testing, some of those might still be seen during ultrasound scans too. So that isn't like the only time. Yeah. where you would be able to know if something like that was was coming or happening. Some of my clients, that would mean potentially ending the pregnancy. For others, it might just mean they feel like they need that information to prepare for the future. Like if mm -hmm. they are gonna have a medical needs child, what do they need to get in place? What services do they need to start looking into? So yeah. there's all different ranges of what you would even do with that information, but we do think it's important that parents have a choice to yeah. accept that testing or to decline that testing. Some of our clients choose not to even get any mm -hmm. of that testing just because it wouldn't change their outcome so they just yeah. feel like they don't need to have that info. Yeah. And that's okay too. Yeah. And luckily if something like that were to happen again, usually it's caught by ultrasound. We certainly wouldn't, it wouldn't be the goal to deliver a baby with a genetic abnormality at home. We would hope that by that point we would see it in other things. Something else That would indicate on. that. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. But that being said, for the most part, it's not uncommon for people to have babies in this age range right now. Yeah, 
for sure. There have been some newer studies too that it isn't necessarily just the age of the eggs. They're starting to find out that um, age differences do play a little bit of a role too, specifically in fathers that are over the age of 35. Also kind of similar, like we're talking about that's when that starts to increase. So it's more common when we're talking about over 40. But that if you have a mom who is 30 and a dad that is over 40, that that is the age difference that can increase yeah, um, some of those risks. there might still be some risks yeah. involved with that. But I think it's important to just talk to your care provider, yeah. see what some of those options are, think about it when it comes to your family and what are your convictions and what kind of information will help you at the end of the day and discuss what those risks and benefits are with your care provider. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that that was really informative. If you liked it, please like our video, give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends and have a great day. I'm not talking. What? Why? Because I'm going to watch you. What? I can't do this with you watching me. You better do a lot of finger pointing. It's like having teacher watch us from I a distance. I know, I don't like it. <laughs> I gotta go somewhere else. Yeah, you gotta go, sorry. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> Sherry's in here with us. I told you, she's over there smiling. She's I bet you she us. has a she's whole hella judgy bunch right of stuff that she would like to say right now. Where? You do. Not at all. What else should we talk about? No, I think you're pretty perfect.